Get your decade ahead horoscope for your sign at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous superstar Leo. Welcome to your horoscope for the month of June 2019, looking at life and love. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing month it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out right now. But in many ways, you are on the precipice. You are on the precipice of really big change and a sense of something returning very soon. But you're not quite there yet. And that is because of Mars. Mars is in the sign just before yours throughout this month, but it is next month that the energy is going to shift in dramatic ways. Not only will Mars enter your sign, but we are also going to have a Mercury retrograde season with Mercury spending part of that time in your sign as well. So you have a really big month to look forward to, but that doesn't mean that this month isn't big as well in its own right. And that is because it is this month that we are going to have uh, some powerful lunar activity taking place in addition to Mars and the sign just before yours. It looks like there is a lot stirring within you, in your soul and in your psyche. You can't necessarily put your finger on it just yet, and chances are your dreams are especially vivid right about now. There may be an inner restlessness with you right about now, but know that ultimately this energy is about helping you to clear space, uh, helping you to understand where it is that you are ready to move forward by allowing healthy closures to take place. Now it is gonna be other people who are a key part of clarifying these closures for you even in their confusion and even in your uncertainty as to how it is that they are supposed to clarify the way. Part of the reason is the new moon happening right around the third of the month, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet. Now this new moon will be speaking with Neptune in a conversation of tension. It is taking place in a part of the sky for you that has to do with friendship. It has to do with groups that you belong to. As much as there is a very social energy with you in the early part of the month, it is also a confusing energy as well. It can feel as if people are not being clear, that you're not understanding people clearly, or maybe they are intentionally not being as direct with you as you would like. Now, if it is that you are connected to people who encourage any kind of escapist behavior, uh, that will feel especially strong in the days around this new moon as well. Now, ultimately, there is something within you that is uh, understanding, even if you can't articulate it or intellectualize it just yet. And where it is that you feel that you are being encouraged uh, to go in a direction of escapism that isn't necessarily healthy, if it feels as if someone is not necessarily being as honest with you and forthright as you would like, well, this new moon is going to ultimately start to show you the way in which you can move towards the clarity that you do desire, even if the main uh, steps, the real action steps are not gonna happen right away. This is more a time of connection and it is more a time of understanding where it is that you truly feel that you have a connection and where it is that you don't feel you have that, it really is okay as well. Now there is one other thing to keep in mind here. Um, if you do end up connecting with new people or connecting with new groups or being invited to new group endeavors, know that all may not be as it seems on the surface. Um, it could be that you are being presented with an image or presented with this notion of what these people or what this person as part of a group endeavor, right, can do for you, uh, whether personally or professionally, but the reality may be a little bit different. And I would add, this is absolutely not the time to mix friends and money. Uh, it can be that even if you take something like uh, investment advice from a friend, it could end up costing you a lot. And so where possible, now if it feels as if you have it to give and it's not a big deal, that's one thing. But where it is that it feels as if you are being asked uh, and it feels like it is uh, asking a lot, then it may be a good idea to take a little bit of a step back and ask yourself, 
what feels right for you. Now, as we navigate forward, uh, right around the 18th of the month, we are going to have this month's full moon. Now, this month's full moon is happening in a part of the sky that is considered your home in the sky. It is a part of the sky that you have a connection with on a heart level, uh, that you have a connection with on a level of your own sense of self, your own sense of confidence, your own connection to what it is that you are really passionate about in life, uh, what it is that you're willing to take a risk for so that you can be in the fruits of those labors that much more. Now, here's the thing. Again, we've got an active Neptune, Neptune speaking in tension with this full moon because you already have such a personal and important connection with this part of the sky. It looks like the hope is especially high. It is Jupiter happening close to this full moon in the sky, but the confusion is going to be especially high as well. Not the time for major risks, for major gambles, uh, uh, for putting it all on the line, as they say, right? Um, because it looks like, again, there's that lack of clarity. You may think you're placing a strategic bet, but you are missing some key details there. Now, I would also add that where it comes to uh, children, because children are ruled by this part of the sky, children you want or children that you have, um, Again, all may not be as it seems with the information that you get at this time. So if it feels as if there's something that you're wanting, let's say you're wanting a child and you're getting certain advice, uh, this may not even be the time to seek advice in regards to that. Uh, know that much better, more precise, more hopeful advice that actually is accurate will come a little bit further down the road, especially once we get past the Mercury retrograde, once we get into the later part of summer. This energy can also play out on a level of creativity and your creative endeavors. If it feels as if you're wanting to feel more connected as part of the creative process, or you're wanting what you create to connect with others, that can feel a little elusive under this energy, and that really is okay. Again, if you are a creative person of any kind, you know that that is just part of the process and that is just part of the journey. Where it comes to matters of love, it is going to be for most of this month that Venus is going to be moving through a friendship part of your sky. It is friendship that is the space where you are most open and most amiable where it comes to matters of love. However, it is going to be Venus and the sun moving through this part of the sky that are also going to be speaking with Neptune in a connection of tension. We've also got, of course, uh, this full moon happening in a very flirtatious part of your sky. And that is going to add that element of the Neptunian energy. And if all of that wasn't enough, within days of that full moon, Neptune will go retro. So at the full moon, Neptune is standing still. Its energies are especially powerful. All of this to me adds up to a time when it may be hard for you to appreciate the love that is actually there. There may be a part of you that is hoping that love could be something else or something more than it is. Uh, it is also possible now that some of your own expectations are especially heightened or that you are feeling some core expectations that you have are not being met. I'm going to go back to this idea of friendship and overdoing it and escapism, uh, where it is that your friends empower you to take a more uh, measured perspective. Those are the friendships to cherish, but where it is that uh, your friends are encouraging escapism, as fun as it may be, uh, well, some of that tendency and some of the not so great side of that tendency can show up including how it is that that speaks to where you are in love and why that part of it can show up for you as well. So if you're open to meeting someone new, yes, have fun, okay? Spend time with friends where it feels right. At the same time, though, stay connected to self and the actions that feel right for you. Uh, what is it that people are actually showing you versus uh, what it is that you are being encouraged to believe? Those can be two very different things with a month like this, but I think that you will find if you focus more on the evidence, if you focus more on what is being shown to you, 
you will be able to appreciate the love that is on offer to you that much more. For those of you who are just dating someone, getting to know someone, I feel like that full moon in particular, you want to avoid any kind of important uh, conversations or any kind of very consequential moments. Although sometimes those things can just happen. Uh, that's the thing with consequence is that it just kind of shows up. Uh, it could be at this time that you are realizing certain things about yourself or about this person. Um, whether it is about you or about this person, it seems that what is being realized at this time it may not necessarily feel very good. It may feel a little bit disappointing at that time as well. And so where possible, and if it feels right to you, you might want to create some space around that time. However, where it is that a certain truth or a certain insight is showing up for you, it is ultimately up to you to decide how much of it you are going to acknowledge and to honor. But that's the thing with the truth. Ultimately, the truth is designed to help you to see what is so that it empowers you to move yourself towards greater love and greater wisdom as well. And for those of you who are in an established bond, I would say with a month like this, not to mix friendship and love. So it is a great time for you to be more lofty with your partner, meaning to envision a future together, to connect on a level of friendship. Uh, these can be beautiful ways to use this energy. However, where it is that you have your friends, uh, a month like this says, have your social time, have your friends, but then, have that space with your partner to nurture the connection that the two of you share. It is important to strive to be as grounded as possible, as measured as possible with a month like this, because uh, it can feel a little emotional at times where it comes to matters of heart. But where it is that you do the work, you take those steps to want to see things from a more balanced perspective, you will be rewarded with a connection that feels more secure. What I love about this month for you, well, look, there's a lot here, but despite all that Neptunian energy, I do love Venus moving into a social part of your sky. You've got the sun in there as well. This can make for truly friendly times and a time when you're able to engage more people that much easier as well. A time when it is really nice to get together with others and to connect with others in a more genuine way. Yes, there are those brief moments where it may feel as if what you're being presented with may not actually be the case. But if you're willing to allow people their illusions and not take it personally and not make it anything that has to do with you, you might actually find yourself amused. You may actually find yourself entertained and truly enjoying the company of others. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm so grateful for it. You can get a video like this every week by logging on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. It'll be a great month. Enjoy.